Hi. Hello. So uh, my name is Alvaro Leiva. I'm a production engineer at Facebook and Instagram, and I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch. So let's get this, <laughs> let's get this over. So uh, basically, my talk is about how we saw Leonard's talk last year about TA Think, and we saw that it was a really cool project. So we started finding out what can we do with it, and we found this problem. So we tried to solve it with TA Think. So um, basically, I will start saying, like, why did we want to experiment with this? How was our strategies? And then our results, uh, yeah. OK, cool. So uh, as a raise of hand, can like the system that you work on, can anybody raise their hand if that system is deployed if once a week? OK, cool. <laughs> once a day? Cool, OK. Twice a day. 10 times a day, 20. Yeah, so uh, the, reason why, the reason why I say this is because in, at Instagram, we deploy, since two years ago, we deploy more than 50 times a day, because basically what we try to do is that we try to deploy each single commit that a developer seems, sends to master. We try to deploy that directly into production, have it enough time in production, so it gives a signal if that commit will break or not break, and then move to the next one. Uh, this works really good for us because it allows us to find things that will break or security vulnerabilities and stuff like that like really quick. Um, so the way that this works, it's simple. A developer commits its code. Um, uh, we package it into our own internal tooling. We run tests into it, and then we send it into production. And this like, really works really well because it allows us to chip small changes. A developer, it's like, after he lands his code, it's like an hour until it's in production. So he's around. If, if he breaks production, he can help us like, fix it. And it's really easy to roll back to the previous state. Um, cool. So basically, you, how we do this, and you have to imagine that this is version A. And this is kind of a representation of what will be our source tree. For those who don't know, Instagram is mainly a Django shop, so that's Python. Most of these are just plain text files. So we basically have this package that is a representation. We strip things that we don't want. We compile a few things that are C. Uh, we convert Python to bytecode, and then we package into our format. Then a developer comes, make a commit, make a small change, and then we do the same process, and we end up with a package that is really similar to A, but has all the components. And then we also have C that probably also change different things. And you can see that if we do this a lot of times a day, the sum of A, B, and C gets really big. So this was like a really interesting problem to solve with CA Sync, and I will explain a little bit how we view CI Sync. That is like for reasons of brevity and for what the abstraction of our problem is, maybe oversimplified, but OK. So the way that we work is that we take this version A, and then uh, what CI Sync does, it will take and divide it in little chunks of data. The magic about CI Sync is that these chunks are variable length, so that means that um, this, this piece over here can wait like 10K, but this one can wait 20Ks and stuff like that. So we take those packages, and then CA Think will output two things. The chunks, there are these files, and an index file. That index file, uh, it's basically a recipe on how we're going to take these chunks and then reconstruct them into creating the, the, the directory. So this is the serialization, and then the opposite process is that you take your index file, then you grab whatever chunks it says that you have, you um, assemble them in the, in the right order, and then you have your package back. The cool thing about this is that if we now have a package V that has a small change of, uh, of it, the, the serialization result will be really similar between A and B. And maybe we'll have one extra or two extra chunks there, and we'll, uh, and we'll yield a different index file. So now we don't have to think in terms of versions. We just sync, or we just have all these, oh, hello. OK, we just have all these, all these stores, all these chunks stored in a single location. And then what we distribute, it's the index file. And the index file is what it will become our version. Um, so OK, so that is basically how we use CA sync. OK, so it's, 
really simple. The way that we work on this is that we put an intern who was really good at, at his job, um, and we ask him like to come with abstractions, stuff like that. Um, First of all, we wanted to create like an abstract definition of package that will englobe this idea of having stores and having index, uh, but also will not like be subjected to just file systems and maybe instead of syncing the index file as a, as, a, as a file in directory, we want to sync it as a database record because this like lends to be a key value stuff. So the first thing that we did is that we changed the idea of index to an idea of manifest. And the reason is really simple. Um, what CAThink gives you as an index file, it's basically a recipe to reconstruct your package. But it doesn't give you any information on how that package was constructed, who constructed, where it constructed, um, did it use um, certain compilers, uh, what version, what hash of, of the um, of the Mercurial repository. And then we put it into stores. Um, so this is really important for us. It's like the information about the package is almost as important as the package itself. So we created this tool called CA package to make an abstraction over CA sync. And the way that you will get the, 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 the index file, it works something like that. You give CA package stage, and then it gives you, uh, you give uh, a URI. That URI in this case is an SQL query, so we can store all the things onto, into SQL. And this, is, this will be our, mm, our manifest. Um, basically, here the data, it's an encoded version of what you would get into index file. And then you, have, you see that we put all the other information that we do care about. Stuff like, for instance, what is the package name? Like on Instagram, of course, we deploy our Instagram package. But how about if you want to deploy virtual environments? Or we want to deploy other binaries like this? Not just file system, but simple binaries. Uh, we have version. Like with the same package, we build it multiple times. So it will be really good to have versions. Um, all those things. Uh, finally, we basically have a store adapter that um, that we can, st if we want to save a uh, retrieve the store from an HTTP server, we can. If we want to store it from local disk, we can. And we can also do torrent. So that is basically how we did it. Um, so let's see a few, a few experiments that we did to see how was the result. And then we will be done. So the first thing that we did is we work on the creation. That's why I put like a little cookie there, because it's like, how do we create the package? The first experiment that we did, we took a 100 version of Instagram, and we created in our regular format, and then we created with CA package that is basically an abstraction over CA sync. Um, the, first, um, the first thing that, that we did find out is that we save about 90% of space. And this is kind of obvious, because this is the idea of CA sync at the end of the day. Um, in our regular model, basically, each version is a full package container of the things. While uh, when you do it with these things, you're just including the new stuff or whatever extra it is. And in terms of resources and time, creating the things took about the same time. And it makes sense because we use the same technologies, we serialize the same way, uh, we compress and uncompress using the same libraries. So basically, the, the big win was in space. Um, you can see if you deploy more than 50 times a day, um, by at the end of the day, you are saving a lot of network because you are not chipping all the binaries, so you're not chipping all the components. Uh, you are saving in space, and eventually reconstructing will be faster. So the second part of this experiment uh, was to actually get the um, get these packages and put it into production in the same way that we deploy our normal system. So in parallel. We basically had a few, uh, a handful of machines that when a, when a commit came and landed into master, we created the C package and then we chip it into production. Uh, we measured the total bandwidth, we measured the time that it took to stage, and the resource usage. Uh, the total download was like, again, like 90% safe, makes sense. Uh, we are basically downloading less stuff because moving from version A to B, it's really pain and pain free but the the cool thing is that moving from a to c without going through b it's also really pain free uh, the stage time was faster and the resource usage was basically the same again because we use the same technologies um, so that concludes basically what we did um, what's next we want to try on binary heavy distributions so again we say python 
application is basically mostly text files, but we want to try it with virtual environments that basically has a lot of binary things. Uh, we want to stop shipping a chunk through HTTP and start using torrent. Because if you have a big infrastructure, you can leverage the fact that most of your machines already have them, uh, the, the chunks. Uh, we want to embed CA sync. We, you, right now, we just shell out and execute it. Uh, we would really like to start using CA sync as a library instead of just shelling out to it. And finally, we want to also try other toolings different than CA sync uh, because the idea is really cool. And we would like to stress test it against other things in the, in the market. So, Basically, that's it. I finished. Yeah, yeah don't worry. Question, question, there will be the questions. And yeah, also, if we run out of time, I'm going to be here, and I have stickers if people want. Half a second. So my f the question is, um, because you, you, just the last point that you raised, that you want to stop shelling out. Do you, re do you want to turn CSync into a library, or do you want to re-implement the code? So CSync, um, again, I, I don't want to overstep my boundaries here, but so you think works, uh, or it's written in a way that it resembles a lot like a library. It's just it's it's in version two, so it, I, I I don't know if it's if the API is going to be stable or not. And basically, what we want is to take that live that same thing and put it into a Python binding. Um, Go ahead. Does it work? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so my uh, intention was that always that it was supposed to be a library, and oh, yeah. that's why it's written in the library style, but mm -hmm. I haven't come around to make it a library yet. Uh, my other question uh, was actually just that, uh, uh, what's the size of your images? Uh, the, the, the things that, that, that we produce? Yeah, the, the stuff that you actually store there, like what's the average size? Oh, the, the, you mean the full size? OK, I don't know if I can say that. The size of my just, just a rough address. Okay, it? so it's like I don't know. I would say like two, like 50 megabytes to 200 megabytes depends on, on the size. These are like text files, so you will basically like even if it's like really big when you compress it, it go really shrink. Thanks. So you create a lot of packages per day. Uh, what do you do with all chunks? After a while, do you garbage collect them, or do you keep everything all the time? So the, the cool thing about that is that since we deploy every commit, by the time that we deploy, I'm going to say a number, commit number 150. There's no point of, of going back to anything before that, because we know that we are in a good place, right? So we purge all chunks all the time. And the way that you do that is that you have a list of all the index that you, I mean, the, all the chunks that compose your whatever you want to keep in the back. And then you just serialize it and find all the chunks that doesn't belong to that list. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you cannot deploy at this speed <laughs> having different branches. You always deploy from master. Yes. Um, I would like to ask if uh, something like that can be achieved using uh, system uh, using um, Git uh, Annex or uh, Git LFS, and if <laughs> not, what are, uh, what are the advantages of using uh, CA Sync? So uh, that's what we are going to discover. Like in the next step, we're going to start using other tooling. The good thing that I really like about CA Sync is that it's general purpose. It's not the best on particular like this particular problem, but it's really general purpose. So we can apply the same techniques and put it into binary distribution instead of just text. Or maybe we want to chip like an entire file system with this, and it, it works really good. While Git and all the things tends to be like more single into problem, but I cannot say that for sure because we haven't tried yet. So one more question. Go ahead. He was trying to make a question. So you have an, an incremental way to ship packages. Do you also have an incremental way to build if there is only small changes every time? So if uh, let me see if I can kind of explain. Not really, because uh, when you do A and B, you have to think that this, don't think of this as incremental. That's kind of the first thing that I try to get out of my mind. Think of this like I build A, I build B, and it happens to have like components of A and components of B are similar. But this could be like two different applications, like they don't have to be. So don't think of this as incremental of A, of a to B. With that in mind, you still need to serialize your whole directory and Compare and sorry, compare the chunks, and then realize which one you actually have to build. But when you are on that point, then you already wasted like 90% of your time on just doing the serialization and and yeah, and doing the serialization. 
yeah. Uh, I'm going to stay here, so if people want to ask me questions, you can do it after this. Yeah. Thanks a lot.